Hello fellow colorists, welcome back to the channel, J.I. Colorist. My name is Jody, and today I'm going to share with you a review of the Equiline brush pens. These are a brush pen made by Royal Talons, and I purchased these myself in the summer of 2023. I've been working with them for a couple of months in my coloring books now, and I wanted to bring to you my review. These brush pens are one of a few brands that I do own, and these ones are actually unique and special in their own right. They've got a few hidden things that I'm sure most people don't realize, and we're gonna go through all of those in this video today. Let's start off with the basics. They are a Royal Talons is the maker of these. They are actually made in Germany. They are a round barrel. So I do have a stopper on the side of my uh, table here to stop them from rolling off the table. So that's the one thing that uh, is a little bit annoying is there is they're very smooth and they do roll quite easily. They have a fiber nib and we will talk a little bit more about their nib in later in the video because there is something very special about this nib. They do have color numbers and names on the barrel of this. They do not have it on the cap. The cap does post to the end of the pen, which is awesome. They do snap to close. You are supposed to store these horizontal so that the ink is uh, distributed fully throughout the uh, pen. Let's talk about what's inside the pen. Inside the pen is dye-based watercolor with gum arabic. So these are not alcohol markers. These are actually watercolor ink inside this. There are 60 colors. You can buy these open stock or more commonly they are sold in sets of color families. So there are sets of blues, yellows, oranges, all of that, but they also have sets of 10. So I will have on screen a picture from Dick Blick's website and also from Royal Talon's website that uh, they have many, many different uh, packages. I had bought in the pastel sex set and the brights, I believe it was, were uh, a mixed. So I had two sets here. They do come with a blender, one in each set. I have used this blender uh, quite a bit uh, with these, but also uh, activating my ink tents um, and Albert Durr watercolor pencils. So the blender has been quite useful. You can buy these open stock if you do run out of one, but the need for buying them open stock is a little bit less than you might think because these are actually refillable. Yes, you heard me. These are actually refillable and I will show you on the screen uh, what kind of bottles you purchase. The Equiline watercolor bottles are available on Amazon and on also at Dick Blick. This is how you refill them. You simply unscrew off the cap and you use the dropper to fill it in. Now, here's the one thing special about this nib. If you notice, when I unscrewed this, what was showing there? I'll take the cap off. You can see that this is a dual-sided reversible nib. So if this nib gets worn down, you can simply gently pull it out and replace it by turning it upside down. So this is a reversible nib. So basically for every pen, you have two nibs, which is great because this is also refillable. You can also get replacement nibs for these. So it's not simply a throwaway pen. It's actually refillable. Uh, they snap on quite well. You can control the intensity of by mixing colors. Uh, also within the pen, if you uh, want your pen color to be a little bit brighter, a little bit more diluted. So there's lots of ways to, uh, to do that. There, like I mentioned, there are 60 colors total. There is a skin tone set. If the, for some reason your nib does dry out, if you've left the cap off or it's dried out a little bit, you can simply moisten it with some water and it will revive itself. So that's also great. 
The refill bottles are one ounce or 30 mils. There's no indication on the marker itself of how many mils are in here. However, the fact that I can uh, simply refill them is pretty, pretty awesome and very unique. A tip for when you do go to refill these is if you are having uh, difficulty opening it for the first time, I usually take a kitchen rubber glove and I will hold this end and I will twist and then it will come off. Make sure that uh, if you're refilling them, you do keep the threads clean and everything is fine and then you can close them back up. Make sure you close them up tight so they don't leak and we store them horizontally. That's a little tip for you. So these are watercolor in a brush pen. They work, because they are watercolor, they are going to work best on watercolor paper. Pages in your coloring books that have been treated with watercolor ground or uh, something similar to that. I will do a little bit of swatching here. I've already completed swatching on watercolor paper in my Bliss swatch book. So I will just bring that out. I will zoom you back out. So these are the swatches and I did these at the beginning of the summer when I first did them. So while they are uh, watercolors, um, they are not going to be highly light fast. So that's uh, something to keep in mind if you're going to be doing some artwork and then displaying it. You probably want to keep it in a sketchbook um, or away from direct sunlight because they will fade over time like most uh, watercolors. So. Uh, these have been on watercolor paper and in my sketchbook and uh, the colors have stayed vibrant for the last few months so not a problem there. I did do them full strength and then diluted it out, uh, dragged the pigment out with water. So I thought that we would today, I have printed on watercolor paper a fun swatch page that's uh, free from Coloring Bliss and I'm just going to do a little bit of swatching with you here and then we are going to work with the uh, pens in a watercolor coloring book and uh, you can see what you think. So I'll zoom you back down and we'll do a little bit of swatching together. Okay, so I've got some water here and I'm going to first put it down full strength and then I'm going to do some uh, diluting of it on the swatch page. Okay, we'll do a few of these together. I'll pick some of the brighter colors. So this is deep yellow. And I'm gonna do the full strength color here. And then I'm gonna put some here. I'm gonna use a brush with some water. And I'm gonna drag it out. And this next one is sand yellow. This is golden ochre. Saffron. Really fun, very easy to move. Okay, I'll do a few more of these on my own and I'll be back to show you. Okay, here is where we're at. It's very easy to get, so this is the full strength and uh, this is one swipe and then dilute it outward. So to show you a bit of the mixing capabilities of these two, uh, I do not have a green marker so I know that if I take blue and yellow I will get green so I can do that a couple of different ways. I can simply take a yellow marker and touch the tip of the blue to the yellow and then I will simply zoom you in and it's already green. I keep going If I keep going, I will get back to my yellow. It 
if I want it to be a bit darker green, I can add green or blue directly to that and then I can bring the blender and I can work it up and make a darker green. So lots of ways to make your own colors. Uh, you can also do that on the plate. If we want to see how well they blend together, we can do blue here, yellow here, and then we can simply bring a water brush and we'll bring them together and you get green in the middle. You can also uh, use your blender pen. You can put a little bit of blue on the blender pen. Then you can also add some yellow to the blender pen. Now we should have blue actually, or sorry, green coming out on the actual blender pen. And just, you're just going to need to work it off. Since I did add the pigment directly to this. There we go. So while it may have stained it, it's, it's fine. Just a couple of different ways to blend to get the colors that you need if you don't have them. So I do like uh, using them as a watercolor itself, but I also have colored them uh, just in my regular coloring books that isn't treated. Let me show you a page of an example of that. So I thought I would show you some examples of where I have used the Equaline brush markers on Amazon uh, printed type paper. So this is Sea of Colors, Angela Gonzalez. I do quite a bit of work in this book, um, both treated and untreated. So this page here is untreated and I use the Equaline markers on this uh, as well as some gel pen glossy accents and some alcohol markers so it's um, a blend of both equaline markers so the blue the uh, coral areas and stuff like that um, and then if you see on the back there is some bleed through so uh, it's very thin paper so it uh, did seep through and it did warp the page a little bit and it's made it fairly crinkly uh, but again this is the worst of the Amazon paper books that I have. Here is another example of where I used the equaline markers. So they do give streaks similar to a normal uh, water-based marker so if you treat them like a watercolor um, and that's what you're expecting then you're going to be just fine and not disappointed. They don't seep through, which is awesome. Uh, this is a little bit heavier uh, cardstock type paper. You really should try and match your medium to the paper it's meant to be on. And uh, so that's why for the rest of this video, we are going to be using a watercolor book. So we are going to do Woodland Watercolor by Claire Teresa Gray. And I have selected a page and we are going to work on this page a little bit together. And we are going to use exclusively a uh, paintbrush with water and the Equaline brush pens. Put a bit on there. So let's use the blender pen and uh, zoom you in. And we'll blend this out. So it will move things around. It'll blend two colors together. You want to wipe off the blender pen like you would any normal pen. If you've put too much down, you can always take a, a water brush and pick some up. And because this is watercolor and watercolor paper, you are able to lift and remove. Let's use a lighter pink and we'll 
little bit here. And then we will take a water brush. You can also uh, scribble onto a palette because it is just a watercolor and you can move it that way. So if you are using non-treated paper, then that is what I would suggest because um, these are quite juicy. And so if your paper isn't treated, it does tend to pill the paper. Um, so that's one thing to note. Okay, so let's do that. I'll grab a palette, do the same color that I did before. Do this color. And we'll pick it up. So this allows you to uh, um, control the intensity of the color a little bit more. And it requires less scrubbing to move around. And then you can come back in to do some shading. Say I want to mix these two greens together. So we have green that is called pastel green, and then I have fur green. So I don't, fur green's a little bit too dark and blue for me. So I'm gonna try and put some pastel green here. It's very light. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of that. And there we go. I want to add some green to that. Up a little bit. You can leave it full strength, or you can mix it. Let's do a little bit of the branch. So I've got a couple of colors. So I have sepia light and I have deep sepia deep. So let's see. I'm going to put in just a little bit of this just a single dot really of the sepia deep and I'm gonna move it around and provide some shading to these hatched areas. You can also pick up 
a little bit off of directly with your paintbrush allows you a little bit more control and what I would do is um, leave it to dry before adding the lighter color or add the lighter color first and then uh, come back later to do the shadows. Just make sure that's dry in between. If you didn't want to use a paintbrush later, uh, with the lighter color after this first area is dry, you can come back in and uh, just go full strength. That way You've got the dark areas already there shadowed and you can just blend right into it. If you want to blend with a water brush, you can. I'll keep working on this. And uh, if we want to do a large wash, you can draw on the side of the marker uh, because it is a flexible brush. You can get a larger swash. Although um, I personally would put that onto the palette and pick it up and do a wash that way and that uh, would get you a bit better result. Okay, I'll zoom back out. But as you can see, um, no pilling, everything went really well uh, when you're using the proper paper. When you are using a regular paper, so we'll just grab uh, this Sea of Colors book again. And we'll Flip to a page, it's the page at the back here. If you are working on non-treated paper, uh, this is what's gonna happen, so. It's fine if you're just doing small details, uh, you're not gonna have any problem. If you're trying to uh, blend though, you're going to have an issue. One, um, you're not going to be able to move it very much. That's like soaked the paper through. So that, that's not going to work. Um, if I have another color, maybe you have that the center and then I'm trying to blend these colors together. It's, um, there is some blending there, but it's not, not great. And it's very juicy, so it's already, um, you start to peel the paper very, very quickly. So it's not ideal. And if you were gonna uh, put this down and then wait for it to dry, then you would just have a harsh line. You're not gonna get a blend. So let's also try using the blender pen. Again, you're just starting to pill the paper. So if I leave a bit of white in between there and then try and blend, um, no, it's not moving. So having the right paper is the only thing you need to do because here we are with uh, watercolor paper. If I do that, And then the pink in between. We can move it on both sides, no problem. I could move it with this, no problem. So, so I guess the, uh, I love these. They're great to work with, but you've got to be using the right paper for the right medium. And I think that goes without saying for all of our art supplies. We can only expect them to do what they're meant to do if we give them the opportunity and the best situation to work one. 
a quick comparison of the blender. So I've got the Ecoline blender here, and then I've got a Tombow ABT water-based blender here. Uh, the blender here is, again, it's refillable. I'm not sure if there's a separate blending solution you can buy, or if not, I probably would try a glycerin and water-based uh, solution and uh, fill it up with that. The nib is reversible, and this is, uh, you can unscrew the cap. And there are two nibs there for the price of one. The Tombow is not refillable, it's not replaceable. The nib does seem to fray more than my Equaline, and I'm not sure if that's because I've used this slightly more um, or not, but the Tombow is also drier. Uh, the Equaline is juicier, and so I'm not sure if uh, that's just because of the nature of the fluid, um, because the brush pens are also uh, juicier than any Tombow. So um, not sure if that's because of the ink inside or not, but uh, just so you know, if you're trying to activate something easily uh, and it's not water-based paper, then you'll need to be light-handed with this blender because it does get to be juicy. Um, so those are the two water-based blenders that I've been using on my coloring books to activate both my Albert Durr watercolor pencils and my ink tents. Do I like and do I recommend the Talons, Royal Talons Equaline brush pens? Yes, I do. I like them, but I also am using them on watercolor paper for or treated paper in my coloring book. So I'm not going to just use them on regular paper and expect them to perform uh, other than, I mean, like a Tombow, it's gonna leave streaks. Uh, they're very much more juicy than a Tombow, so they are going to pill your paper. So I would probably be frustrated if I were using these on regular paper that was not treated because I would not be getting the blends or, or everything that I wanted. I love that they are refillable. I love that there are actually two nibs provided with each pen. I love that you can get replacement nibs. I love that I can control the paper. I can do wet on wet. I can do wet on dry. They do have lots of different uh, ranges, uh, five packs, 10 packs, 15 packs, 20 packs. The most, uh, there are 60 colors. So if that isn't enough for you, a Tombow does have a hundred colors or a hundred and a few colors. So I would treat these more like I treat my Zig uh, clean brush markers. So I, I love to use those. I do use those on non-treated paper, um, but I use them for fine detailed areas. So if that's all you're going to use are smaller detail areas like little flowers or stuff, then you won't need to be doing a lot of blending. And you won't be getting uh, your pages buckled. If you're planning on doing a full page uh, similar to a watercolor, then you really need to be using treated paper. And that's about all I have to say. I currently have, I think, 24 colors right now. Um, if I find them on sale again, I definitely would pick them up. That's how I bought these ones. I'm happy that they're not going to go into the landfill as soon as one is empty. I hope this answered a few of your uh, questions about what these uh, pens are and what makes them special. So that's it for this review. I hope you are having a creative and colorful week and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.